don't do this if you are a first time home buyer. What's going on everybody? It's Sasha, your market expert here in Charlotte. Today we're gonna to be talking about things you should not do if you are a first time home buyer. And honestly, even if you're going on to buy your second or third home, one of these points might hit you and could save you a ton of time, money, and potentially regret in the future and you don't have time for any of those. So make sure you watch the entire video. If you haven't already, do me a favor, hit that subscribe button right there and the like button. It's 100% free and keeps me motivated to keep making these videos. I do appreciate it. Feel free to leave a comment and as always, if there's any questions I can answer or anything I can do to help with your potential transition to the Charlotte area, or our real estate market, you can always call, text, or email me anytime. I'm here to help you in any way that I can. Now let's get into our first don't do, which is don't just fixate and keep your attention on the house. Make sure that you're looking at the neighborhood and the location of the house. Once you have a house, you can remodel it to the point where it's completely unrecognizable, or you can even tear it down and build something new but the neighborhood, the neighbors, and the location is something that you don't have control over. So I'm gonna tell you what I personally do and what I tell other buyers to do if they're really not familiar with the neighborhood. So after a day of looking at homes, if you see a home that you're actually interested in and don't know too much about the neighborhood, go grab a cup of coffee with your spouse, your family, some ice cream, go drive over to that neighborhood park your car and just get out and walk. Walk for about 15 to 30 minutes and you would be surprised at actually how much you can learn about the neighborhood in itself. You can see what type of people are living there. Are they older, younger? Do they have kids? Is it a family friendly area? Just by looking at backyards, are there swing sets? Does Is somebody running a mechanic shop out of their garage and there's 15 cars parked in the driveway, that might not be something or someone that you want to live next to for whatever reasons. And look and see if the other homes in the neighborhood are maintained. If most of the homes are maintained and in good shape, there looks like somebody's living there that is showing pride in ownership, that's a really good thing. Now, all neighborhoods are not going to be perfect, especially older ones built in the 60s, 70s, 80s, 90s. Um, when there are, are older homes, there's a higher probability of the home catching up with someone and them not being able to maintain them. So you might see a couple houses that are in pretty bad shape, need new roofs, new windows, and things of that nature. But if the majority of the neighborhood and the houses in the neighborhood look like they're fairly well maintained and it looks like an environment that you might want to live in and trust me you can get a really good feel for a neighborhood if you just walk around for about 30 minutes i personally do this all the time i have a bunch of neighborhoods that i love that i hope to live in in one day i'll grab luna my dog hop in the car drive over to that neighborhood and park and just take her on a 30 minute walk doing that I'm learning about the neighborhood, I'm seeing the houses, I'm getting a chance to talk to people. If they're in their front yard, say, hey, hi, hey, how you doing? How long you lived here? What do you think about the neighborhood? Do you like it? You can learn a lot of stuff by literally just walking around the neighborhood. So make sure that you take the time and you're looking at the neighborhood and location and not just being directly fixated on the house itself. The second thing, don't miss a really good opportunity because you're looking for the unicorn. You're looking for that perfect house that's gonna hit every single one of your check boxes. I have seen this happen a lot, especially with first time home buyers. I've had times where I take somebody out to see a home for the first time. They really like it, but they think that the grass is greener on the other side. So what happens is, they like the house and they start thinking, well, this is the first time I've even seen a house. Am I pulling the trigger too soon? Am I being too eager? Or should I wait and see what else is out there? Now, I completely understand, 
but if you find a house that meets most of your check boxes not all you should strongly take it into consideration and let the agent that you're working with know hey we do like this house but we don't want to feel rushed into making a decision can you just find out a little bit more information you can have them you know pull the comps see what other houses have sold for in the area and you should be picking a good agent at this point um, making sure that they know the market so they can flat out tell you hey you know this house looks really nice the price is good I don't think it's gonna last long I think you should strongly consider it I'll go find out whatever other information I can um, that way you can feel more comfortable in making your decision and just because you say hey I really like this house I want to that's not the end-all be-all you can decide to back out now there might be some repercussions for backing out but just don't think that the grass is greener on the other side there's really in my opinion no such thing as the perfect home unless you're building a completely custom home where you're going over every single square foot in the house and getting it to the exact specifics that you like but as we all know most of us we can't do that now or yet um, so we need to make make do with what we have basically now that doesn't mean you should settle but just take it into consideration and don't miss out on some really good houses because you're looking for that one unicorn now the third thing don't assume that you have to put down 20% when you're buying a home I honestly don't know where this came from or how I even heard about it and I believe this basically my entire life uh, since high school I've been saving up money for a down payment it was a dream of mine to buy a house so I've been saving up for a very long time and the target for me saving up was that 20% so if I wanted to buy a house for a hundred thousand dollars that's twenty thousand two hundred forty thousand three hundred sixty thousand so I was shooting for that down payment and once I started to look for a house and spoke to a lender, they said, no, <laughs> no, man, you only got to put 3% down. I was kind of shocked, but I was extremely happy that the 20% was stuck in my mind because I wouldn't have saved up as hard as I did and as much as I did. So when it came down to it, I ended up putting 3% down and having the rest of the money in my bank account so I can pay for furniture the house was complete I didn't even have plates or forks so you could pay for furniture appliances all that good stuff and have some money left over in your bank account now this is gonna lead me to the fourth thing which is don't drain your entire bank account in order to buy a house you want to be smart financially when buying a house so unless you have a lot of money in the bank and you can afford to do so I don't think you should be putting down 20% if you do happen to put down 20% there are some perks um, you don't have to pay what's called PMI it stands for private mortgage insurance uh, which will save you a couple hundred dollars a month but in all honesty I would rather have a lot more money in my bank account for a rainy day and just pay extra on my monthly payment to go towards my principal then have to put down 20% I don't think it's quite worth it but if you are in a position to do so and you can have plenty of money left over then that definitely might be a good route you want to take but buying a home comes with expenses there's a lot of maintenance and things that you need to upkeep so if you're buying a house make sure you look at the high ticket items which is the roof HVAC water heater and any other thing that you might think will need to get replaced within the next year or two and you need to budget and account for all that stuff if you drain your entire bank account putting down a big down payment or not even maybe you only have three percent for a down payment and another two to three percent for closing costs don't drain that money because then once you get the house you're not gonna have money for any upcoming expenses so make sure you don't drain your bank account and have some reserves in the bank 
when you do buy that house. Now the fifth thing, don't just buy any house. Buy a house that's gonna match your lifestyle. And what I mean by that, if you travel a lot for work or leisure, make sure that you can keep up with the maintenance. And if your lifestyle doesn't warrant you being able to cut the grass um, and keep up with a single family home, a condo or a townhouse might be a better option for you. Me personally, I bought this house when I was 23 going on 24 and at that time I am not doing maintenance. I see how much maintenance my parents have to do at their house in Mint Hill and I just wasn't for that. I'm not, I wasn't interested in doing maintenance. I was more in interested in exploring the city, going out to eat, getting drinks, hanging out with friends and just having a good time. I didn't want to have the thoughts in the back of my head oh man, tomorrow's Sunday, I gotta wake up, I gotta, I gotta work around the yard for a couple hours, I gotta fix this and do that. So that's why I personally opted for a townhome. Um, so if you're somebody that lives a certain lifestyle, make sure you make a pros and cons list of buying a townhouse or a condo versus a single family house so it matches with your lifestyle. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. If there's any questions, I can answer for you, call, text, or email me anytime. And as always, don't forget to hit that subscribe button and I'll catch you on the next one. Take care, bye.